This is the Carib World News. I am Clifton James. We begin in Trinidad. Relatives of Gary Lane, who was found dead in the holding cell of the Aruka police station on Sunday afternoon, are calling for a full probe into what happened, as they claim he would never do harm to himself, as he had his five-year-old daughter to live for. According to a police report, Lane 30 of Mosica was placed in a cell in the Homicide Bureau of Investigations Region 2 area of the station. He was waiting to be interviewed by investigators over a conspiracy to murder and gang-related offences. However, officers who were checking in on prisoners later found Lane unresponsive in the cell. He was taken to the Eric Williams Medical Science Complex in Mount Hope but was declared dead. Crime scene investigators went to the station and examined the cell. Investigators later concluded that Lane died by suicide. Relatives do not believe he killed himself, as they were told Lane hung himself with a pair of trousers. However, the relatives said they sent him a pair of boxers and a short pants, no three-quarter pants, and we were told by the police that suddenly it was a long pants he used to hang himself. Relatives also say they fear a cover-up, as the body was not taken to the Forensic Science Centre in St. James for an autopsy up to yesterday. The United Kingdom is under pressure to join the United States in imposing sanctions on the President of Guyana, who has refused to stand down after a disputed election in March. The former British colony, which borders Venezuela, has been locked in a legal and political impasse since an election rebound found that President David Granger had lost by 15,416 votes. The discovery of oil off the country's coast is destined to transform its economic fortunes, raising the political stakes even higher. After the recount, the chief executive of Guyana's electoral commission, Keith Lowenfield, disqualified 120,000 votes, nearly a fifth of those cast, handing the contested victory to Granger. Last week, the Caribbean Court of Justice, Guyana's final appellate court, overruled Lowenfield. But now another legal challenge has been declared in an attempt to prevent the Commission from declaring Granger's defeat. On Tuesday, the United States Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said it was time for Granger to step aside, announcing travel bans against those undermining democracy in the country or complicit in doing so. He said the country was on a non-democratic trajectory. Jamaican Blob State team member Lance Corporal Shaywen Stevens managed to elicit a rare chuckle from Queen Elizabeth II during a video call with members of the armed forces in which they discussed the vital work that continues for the British Army, Royal Navy and Royal Air Force at home and overseas. According to People.com, Stevens, a Jamaican-born RAF gunner, was sharing with the Queen his unusual lockdown exercise, that of pushing his fiancée's Mini Cooper car around his hometown. The media outlet said Lance Corporal Stevens told the monarch that when he's not working as an RAF gunner, he is often found to be the pilot of the Jamaican bobsleigh team. Gosh, she gasped before giggling, sounds a very dangerous job. Two persons died and five others were injured during a dramatic car chase and shootout that ended in tragedy along the Lilliput Main Road on the outskirts of Montego Bay, St. James on Tuesday. The Corporate Communications Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force confirmed the shooting and the two fatalities. It is believed that persons in a Honda CRV have been involved in a shooting incident in the Rose Hall area and were being chased by men in another car. Both vehicles raced along Lilliput Main Road, exchanging gunfire and performing evasive driving manoeuvres through traffic. During the ensuing car chase and shootout, the CRV swerved out of control and hit a bus before veering into a wall and the light pole. The driver of the CRV died on the spot and the bus driver also died. Several persons were injured in the accident. Russian spies are targeting organisations trying to develop a coronavirus vaccine in the United Kingdom, United States and Canada, security services have warned. 
The United Kingdom's National Cyber Security Center said the hackers almost certainly operated as part of the Russian intelligence services. It did not specify which organizations had been targeted or whether any information had been stolen. But it said vaccine research had not been hindered by the hackers. Russia has denied responsibility. Shamima Begum should be allowed to return to the United Kingdom to fight the decision to remove her British citizenship, the Court of Appeal has ruled. Miss Begum, now 20, was one of three schoolgirls who left London to join the Islamic State group in Syria in 2015. Her citizenship was revoked by the Home Office on security grounds after she was found in a refugee camp in 2019. The Home Office said the decision was very disappointing and it would apply for permission to appeal. Miss Begum left Bethnal Green in East London, aged 15 for Syria in February of 2015, with two school friends. Within days, she had crossed the Turkish border and eventually reached the IS headquarters at Raqqa, where she married a Dutch convert recruit. They had three children, all of whom have since died. Two Indonesian policemen have been jailed over an acid attack on a prominent anti-corruption investigator. The attack on Novel Baswaden three years ago left him blind in one eye and is suspected to be connected to corruption cases he was working on. The officers were arrested after President Joko Widodo ordered the case reopened, but the victim's lawyer said the sentences two years and one and a half years were too short. You're up to date. Carib World News. For local flights, contact Caribjet 439 4444 or caribjet.com.